Hey, what's up everybody? It's Gabriel here. Here's the Schrade knife that I found when I was out hunting for jade in Wyoming. I was praying to find a piece of jade, but I guess Schrade sounds kind of similar. <laughs> so now that I've stopped the active rust, I'm gonna show you guys sharpening 101 using just one stone. The Viking whetstone pendant that I used, this is cut out of jasper and I believe that the historical sharpening stone pendants that were found were made of slate. So they'd start to wear out and gain a more rounded shape with use. This kind of stone is just gonna load up with metal. Now, I wanna demonstrate briefly how to take care of the stone because you can do this technique a few different ways, but basically what ends up happening is since the stone is ultra hard and ultra fine, if it's a smoother polished surface you get the full benefit of how fine the stone is and that's the part of the sharpening that is for shining up steel so you can see that this knife has some light scratches on it now but they're not that deep because they were only whatever texture I put on this hard stone so the trick is when your stone starts to load up with metal you can take any other rock because this is going to be harder than pretty much anything else you could find. So you could use maybe a chunk of quartzite or a piece of shale or maybe even a piece of sandstone because even though this is quite soft, it's going to have enough grit in it to just free up a little bit of power for this sharpening stone again. So overall, a sandstone is not a great choice for a sharpening stone, but it's a good choice for a dressing stone. So just by roughing up my sharpening stone a little bit, I can keep it filing really fast. So there's grinding and then there's honing. Grinding is when you're shaping your knife, you're removing bigger imperfections, etc. And now that I've stopped most of the active rust, I can do honing. So this edge was somewhat sharp, which surprised me considering that the knife was completely covered in rust, if you see uh, part one of this video. So uh, you could also do this dry if you don't have a water source, but I think that for finely touching up the edge, it's a good idea to have a little splash of water handy. So I've just got a cup here. It only takes a few drops. You could use spit too if you want. Um, oil also works and you won't hurt the stone if you put oil on it. I'm gonna take a piece of quartzite that I've got here this is a handy tool because it's about as hard as this jasper. And what I'm gonna do is just give this backside a little roughing. And I could use any surface of this stone because once this is cut flat, it pretty much tends to stay flat. You'd have to dig it the middle for a really long time to try to get it to dish out. So that, that should be good, just a quick little resurfacing. If you're home and you've got a diamond plate or sandpaper, that's the number one choice for just the light lapping. And now I'm just gonna work my way up and down the edge and I'm feeling for the apex of the edge. If you have a knife that's totally dull that you just can't seem to get sharp, you gotta spend a little more time grinding down the sidewall behind the edge because if you think about it, the angle went from being nice and crisp to more blunted over time. So if you only reprofile the tip of the edge up here, eventually you lose the shape. So even though it's pretty thin, the end of it is no longer perfectly together. If your knife's only slightly dull, then you may just need to realign that edge. So just a few motions on the stone, sort of like you'd use a chef's steel, one of those honing rods except this stone is really gonna actually remove metal at a fine rate or a fast rate if you're using it with a coarser grinding technique. So anyway, now that I've stopped the rust, we're pretty much just onto the finer polishing. I'll probably rework this surface again, rubbing the stone on it next time I'm hanging out at camp. I'm back home now, so just kinda making sure I get part two of this video for you guys on the sharpening technique. and. I like to use circles with a small pendant like this because then it doesn't really matter that it's a smaller sharpening surface.
And if I feel a, a little bit of a, you know, crunchy feeling, I might wash my stone off because at this point I'm trying to do finer work. I don't really want little chips in my edge if I can help it. It's especially true if you're straight razor shaving. It's not as big of a deal for other tools, but using a fine hard stone like this will give you a far better edge than just using a pull through sharpener. Now I'm testing it on my thumbnail and I'm feeling where the edge has bite. I could also be testing with my finger pads and we're pretty sharp at this point, just this little bit up here at the tip. And you can feel for the edge on one side and then you feel for it on the other. And it feels like it's non-existent on this side. Like just kind of try to imagine with your mind where the edge is. It might be rolled slightly to one side if the knife's been abused like this one. <laughs> So for that kind of a scenario, I might do a little more of my grinding style sharpening. I'm picking a rougher spot on my stone that's still got marks from when I cut it on my rock saw. That's the kind of sound I like. That's a really fast abrasion. Now, if you don't, feel as comfortable with circles you can also just be doing kind of a straight line but I find that once you find that angle this just keeps it going okay now I'm gonna probe my edge boom sharp again you can see it's got some bite into the nail it's still missing the very very tip of the knife so we're gonna give it a little more uh, another thing you could do for one of these stones, just to really show you how tough this material is, is prep it with some concrete. I'm doing this on the side because I like to use the side like a metal file. That's not as good of a technique for using on the surfaces of the stone, I think, because you want a more uniform scratch pattern for your sharpening surfaces. caught my lanyard here Let me get that back all right so back to a little more filing at the tip you can count how many circles you do on each side but sometimes one side needs a little more than the other so really it's a feel you just you know don't do a hundred on one side without at least checking and comparing before you do another hundred. And also you can change whether you're using the stone to do the motion or you're using the knife. So that's helpful for some people too. If you're more used to doing a, a filing or a honing steel type action. But a honing rod only works for so long. Eventually you need to actually remove some steel instead of just kind of straightening the edge out. And I might switch hands too and flip the knife over. So, let's see how we're doing now. You can also lick your thumbnail just so that uh, the knife doesn't go as deep into it. This also deburrs your edge, and you're not going to cut through your thumbnail. I've done this thousands of times. All right, so that's got the basic edge established. And then from here, it's all really just polishing, because at this point, you're making the scratches in your edge finer and finer. And as you polish the edge to a tighter scratch pattern, it does get sharper and it does get more resistant to corrosion. I find that at best this stone will polish at 30,000 grit because it gives a mirror edge. That's a pretty scientifically measurable fact. And uh, yeah, if you use that coarse technique for the grinding stages, you can do all your knife sharpening with just one tool. I usually forget to bring my belt sander when I go camping. <laughs> So it's really great knowing that I can be completely reliant 
with a really light, really tough, durable stone. And these sharpening stones will last a lifetime under daily use. They just don't wear out. You're, technically, you're abrading the stone a tiny bit if you change the surface preparation, but you could do that 100,000 times probably before you ever wear through your material. And also, I never have to worry about my stone throwing off my edge's geometry because it's lapped perfectly flat. The grit of the surface can be changed up, but in general, the stone starts to slow down a little bit the more you use it and polish even finer. So if you stage your sharpening, you end up with a really nice finish. All right, guys, if you've got any questions or anything else you'd like to see in the Whetstone Academy videos, drop me a comment down below. There's also a Facebook group, Wild Whetstones, and you can get the sharpening stones from me at naturalwhetstonesharpening.com. Thanks for checking it out, and I'll be back at you guys soon with more knife and stone-related material.